Welcome back to Quarantine Apologetics, Defending the Faith While Under Lockdown. Today, a couple things brought me to talk about this. My apologetics specializes in, well, it's a few things, but church history. I I am a freak when it comes to church history. I read as much as I can, and because of that, I'm good for answering objections about the Crusades, about the Inquisition, about... Like, for example, I was just talking to a guy on Twitter, and he was saying that someone accused the evangel evangelization of the Americas uh, being through violence, and obviously whoever said that doesn't know uh, history uh, about the church or colonization or how Pope Paul III in 1537 stood up for the locals, um, who the conquistadors sometimes did use violence against. But, but yeah, some like a lot of people don't care. Now, church history is, is extremely important. The first history of the church comes right from the pages of Scripture it's itself, the book of Acts. As to the apostles, you see Pentecost, and you have St. Peter, and then St. Paul, and they're going around the Mediterranean world, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, and it sets up the church in the first century, until the year about, about 60 years or so, and uh, yeah, now, so... For, for getting into church history, there's two books I recommend. One is Acts, which I just told you about. And the other one is this one, The History of the Church by Eusebius. Now, th this book, um, it, it's available online for her free. So uh, during these times, you don't have to purchase it. I bought this copy years ago from Penguin. But, uh, no, I probably read that through about three times, once the paper copy, twice online. And, you know, it's just a fascinating piece of, of, of history. Because, I mean, what happened, what happened after the New Testament? We don't know. You know, well, we, we're not told in the New Testament. But eventually, the church continued. The church continued on, um... And when you know church history, uh, you can refute lies. Like, for example, a lie that James White likes to tell is that there was no bishop of Rome, monarchial bishop of Rome, until the second century, which is absolute nonsense because uh, he gives the lines of bishops in books three and five. This made out ten books. And the whole idea of knowing church history is really helps with apologetics because there is so many lies about church history over there out there like that there's a book called fox's book of martyrs john fox which is so shameful um there's a book also about england called the fall of orthodox england by an eastern orthodox guy named vladimir moss um, how England was an Orthodox country, and then William the Conqueror had a Papist army, and he comes and imposes the... Ugh, it's so dumb. And of course, you need to know church history to deal with that. There's so many lies out there, and lies are the keys against... And, and, and they're key arguments against the true faith. We know that, that, that Islam is false, because of church history. Like, <laughs> church history and the Quranic claims don't add up at all. There's no basis for them. There's no basis for Muhammad being a prophet. He's standing on absolutely nothing. He thought he had a foundation in the uh, the, the two faiths that it claimed to supersede. It doesn't. There's no foundation. That's why it's important to know church history. Start with Luke in Acts, and then read Eusebius. And there's a lot more also. But uh, it takes years to learn this. I'm learning all the time. But learn church history and then apologetics becomes a lot easier. God bless you all.